Welcome, everyone. It's draft preview month. We're uh, kicking off our, our draft preview and talking to some of our draft hopefuls, and we're running it back with our intern, Ryan McCarty. <laughs> Ryan is up at the Cape after his amazing college season. We're going to kind of fill in from where we left off last time when he was a D3 player of the year, triple crown winner, everything ridiculous. Some of the great things have happened since then, and uh, talk about getting ready for the draft, which is probably something we didn't really think was a possibility four or five years ago. But, you know, here we are. You're in the Cape. I'm here. And uh, you're doing big things. So, so thanks for coming back, Ryan. And uh, how are we doing? Thank you. I was doing great, man. I really enjoying my time down here. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, tell us, right? Because we're not up there with you, unfortunately. <laughs> you're, uh, you're living the life up there as, uh, you know, when we last talked, you were planning on playing down south in the in the CPL for the summer. You know, there was no talk of scouts wanted me up in the Cape, any of that kind of thing. So let's, you know, kind of fill us in how the journey took us to uh, Harwich, right? You guys are yeah. playing there. And, uh, you know, how that happened. Definitely. I think, uh, well... The main connection there also was uh, Coach Miller helping me out. Uh, I didn't even know till not too long ago that he was co he used to coach in the Cape, so uh, he uh, became good friends with uh, my coach right now, Coach Angler, and uh, that was the big connection there at the end of the season, helping me get a contract and a shot up here. Uh, as long as scouts saying this is where you need to be if you want to uh, prove yourself as high as you can, so. Um, that was the, the biggest uh, connection there. And that's how I ended up here. Actually, uh, we worked it out with the CPL to help me out come here as well. Yeah. So what's it like, you know, you got, tell us what playing in the Cape is like, cause we, you know, you hear about it from when you're little, you see stuff about it. Um, but as far as, you know, the experience, you know, who you're playing with, um, host families, you know, the town, everything, tell us what's uh what Cape, uh, Cape, the Cape is like? The Cape life is actually like, it is actually like one of those things that lives up to its height. So many things get such great compliments. And like, I I've heard from everybody how incredible of an experience it is. And it, it is everything it is said to be. Uh, you know, you got a beach near you uh, at all times, really. Uh, although uh, you don't, you don't go in much. Uh, you walk on the beach and there's a lot of shark warnings. Uh, so you stay Stay out of the water. Yeah, I have been about ankle deep. And that's about it. But you get to be on the beach and get the feel of that. Yeah. Um, other than that, the weather here is always beautiful, too. Uh, it's, it's literally about 70, 72 every day here. And, um, like, that's perfect baseball weather. Uh, and now around this time of year, a lot of tourism is going on. So, like, the numbers at our games, there's – I don't even know how many people at our games. Much more than what it would be at Abington. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah so it's it's it, the only way to put it is whatever you hear all the great things you hear about it it lives up to that hype um and you're with some of the best players in college baseball uh for this year's draft and next year's so not you get to see you get to see behind the scenes of their life too and they're just great guys all around what have you learned so far um i've learned how they play they you know what they're normal people too like a lot of them you see a lot of their success and like these big D1 players and you think they're like on top of the world and stuff like that, but they deal with the same stress uh, anybody else does. They put that kind of uh, stress on themselves, um, not purposefully. It just kind of happens. Like this is something you've worked for your entire life. Um, so it, there's no other way to feel about it. Like you, you are going to get a little nervous and stuff like that. And they kind of, they feel the same way. So it's, we've all we're all kind of learning together how to get through that um and just we we enjoy the game as much as possible um that's that's the biggest thing how much of what you did in the season traveled i mean like you obviously know the schools that they went to and, and <laughs> they came from anybody say anything to you that was you know these d1 stars that like you're this small school d3 kid from from penn state abington but but did anybody like you know what you did did that travel to their level uh, about 
more than 70% of my teammates already knew who I was when I came there. That was hysterical. Uh, there was a lot of great guys uh, from UVA. I got to stay with uh, Jake Geloff from UVA for a little bit. And he was like, dude, what were you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, like, these just, like this guy like raked this year. Like He hit like 380, 375 with 20-some bombs at UVA. And he's like, yo, what would you do? I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> like, I'm trying to, like, I'm up here to figure out stuff, what you guys are doing right and stuff like that. And I guess we're all just trying to help each other become the best version of ourselves. But it was pretty funny seeing these big school guys, like, know me already. It was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. That's something we probably never thought was going to happen, right? It's, <laughs> it, you realize it. It's just crazy. It's, uh, you know, you had some experiences. I mean, by the time you got there, you know, you're already, you were one of the, the 30, 31 Golden Spike semifinalists. Tell yeah. us about that, you know, how you found out and, and what that, like, just that experience, that, that, uh, that recognition, you know. Yeah. It, it was a surreal moment. I remember um, Coach Miller called me before the actual announcement because I think they wanted him to know and to tell me to be ready for what was going to happen. Um, and it was as exciting as ever, as anything could ever be, really. Um, but, of course, once it actually happened and I saw it on social media, I was like, whoa, I actually, that actually happened. Like, he called me and let me know, but then I was like, okay, like, whoa, this actually happened. Um, uh, and uh, a lot of my teammates, I was still in the CPL at the time, and a lot of the teammates were supportive, and they were like, that's, like, how incredible of an achievement that is. Um, and stuff like that, because uh, I don't think I don't think a D3 player has ever gotten to be recognized like that with USA and Golden Spikes. So it's only been uh, and I think some D2 maybe, but, but D2 and Juco. Yeah. But D3 finally making its mark, hopefully opening some ways for other kids, man. So because uh, there's a lot of good guys coming up in D3. So it's exciting times in baseball. And I think a lot of guys are going to start to even out each division little by little. Oh, also hit another honor recently, and that was being a, you know, ABCA Rawlings first team national all position guys. It was, you know, the top dozen or so position players in the country. And you're up there with, you know, Ivan Melendez, the uh, guy who eventually won the Golden Spikes Award. Yeah. You know, just guys who were just totally crushed it this year at, at D1. Is that is that another thing that's just like you see that picture with those guys and then there's you right in the middle <laughs> there's my picture I'm like oh, hey there's me in there like, yeah. Yeah. it really it's exactly how it is uh because i mean you put in so much time and effort to all this stuff and then when it actually happens it's it, it does feel nice you know so it wants you it wants you wanting more it leaves you wanting more at the end of each day um so um, in my eyes it's only going to have me work even harder because i know there's greater things out there to achieve um uh, rather than getting just comfortable with stuff like this it, it should only make you want to work harder because the, obviously the goal is to keep winning championships at the highest level which would one day be the world series so that's you it's, there's a lot of work to be done still so how do you kick it up a notch or two or five or ten or whatever you need to do right because you know obviously your approach has been pretty well documented and recognized and you know, guys who are, you know, the, the, the Dave Millers and the, the, the Jeff Mantos of the world talk about how you've got that major league approach and, and able to, to just kind of live in the moment and segment things and, and, and keep working. But, you know, how does your or does your routine change now that you're A, up in the Cape and B, three weeks from now, a couple of weeks from now, you know, things could really change with the draft. It could be bigger. Yeah. So if anything, it makes it a little easier now at this time of year without a, a lot of schoolwork in the way and stuff like that. <laughs> so it loosens up your mind even more. You get to relax a lot more, uh, which helps you reach that like Zen state of mind where you're like, I'm just playing baseball, man. I'm just chilling. It's a lot easier to do when you're hitting like five something, but, uh, but so you got to find that same mentality. Like you're still that same player, no matter what you're hitting. Um, you just got to recognize that like over a span of time, of course, uh, for an amateur player trying to earn their spots a lot easier for them to fall into that trap of being nervous. But the only way out of it is to 
just believe in yourself each every day that you are the best that you can be and that you have to trust your work ethic as well. How do you get to the point where that's the case rather than too much of your worth is invested in your self-worth is invested in what's my batting average today? Because, you know, you had the, the, the season from like all timer, you know, but the last day, you know, you guys get, it was the worst possible day for Abington. You know, you're falling behind huge in both games and, you know, everybody's probably pressing at the plate and, you know, you, you had your lowest day of the season. I uh, pressed it. Yeah. You know, and, and at the Cape, I mean, nobody hits 552 at the Cape because <laughs> otherwise you're not going to the majors. You're going straight to Cooperstown, but you know, you're, you're off to an okay start, but I mean, now you're not, you know, you're not a 550 hitter. You're in the two hundreds, you know, or, yep. or right around 200. What, how do you not, if you're a young guy and, and you're, putting too much of your self-worth in batting average versus the process how do you change that you have to change your you have to change what your definition of success is of course everybody makes batting average obp slugging the definition of success but that's for the the numbers you know that's for the people who do analytics and twi tweet stuff that's that's for them as the pl actual player yourself, your definition of success has to change um, to like th this form of quality at bats. Like what is, what is a form of quality at bat for you? Like nobody's on base. Well, at any time hitting a ball hard is of course quality at bat. You, you, you beat the pitcher, but there's so many players out there to field their position. So that's how you have to go about the process and you have to apply that to yourself uh, because that's that there's only one way to feed your mind positivity when you're when you're struggling and that's because you can't keep looking at these numbers that go out on social media you have to focus on your success and your definition of success um, I think also from a lower level it is definitely an adjustment at first too, to the pitching which is exactly why I'm trying to get as many at bats as, as possible before July happens that way I'd be prepared as possible to just go there, start fresh and just break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those numbers only represent what's happened in the past. And it's pretty hard to change what's happened in the past. Right. That is true. The past is the past. There's literally no changing it. Super easy to get caught up on that. I do it a lot of times. Uh, even on that last day of, of uh, Abington this year, I was pressing a lot. I, uh, I really wanted to get home run number 30 out of the way. And then uh, that's when I, af after the game, I realized, oh, like I fell into it. Like it happens. Like it, it's just uh, it's like 29 is going to haunt me now. <laughs> yeah, so, it must, must be nice to, to be haunted by only hitting 29 bombs in a well, season. That's, that's just the competitor in me speaking. Of course. Uh, it, you always, yeah. want one, always want one more than what you got. Of course. Yeah, you always like, want the next one, no matter what. If it's a, especially a nine like that, you know, it's like, it's. <laughs> Like 27 would almost be more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Stop hitting so many. Stop, you know, yeah. a little bit worse of a season would have been good. Um, <laughs> Just jokes. Just yeah, that's right. You, uh, you know, you get through that. Now, obviously, all these crazy, you know, these amazing things happen um, after the season. You know, player of the year, you know, national triple crown winner, all these all-star teams. As a result of that, what are some of the what's some of the like mind blowing things that experiences that you've had? Just like from this season, because of that, yeah, you know the things oh, that, that. two fifty Ryan McCarty in high school would have never thought was was possible. You know, uh, you know what that two fifty Ryan though always believed it was possible though. I think that was the biggest thing. I knew at the time I wasn't the player I am today, but I believed I was this good like always and i think that's the most important thing your mind is always so powerful it's true uh, even now it's true. i can i can validate that he's not just saying that it's it's definitely true yeah, you know, like, always always that competitive streak too yeah literally and, and like even like a version of me now I, I still believe there's like a lot more in me to bring out i think when i uh get my when i have an opportunity um i just think like i could program certain things smarter 
Um, like we don't have a trainer at school. I'm kind of going like we, we got workout programs before, but I'm doing this blindly at my local gym. Um, if I could work with like strength coach, like what routine can help me become more flexible, uh, stronger, what, like we're doing these, uh, certain workouts for teams and like, they're using force plates to, to understand what kind of, uh, force someone puts into the ground. Can we, can we put more mass on him? Uh, can, in, uh, in my case, it'd be more mass, but in other cases, some guys can get leaner, but how can they still have more, more pop? They could add pop while losing weight. You know, I could gain speed while gaining weight. So like all these things go together. And I just think there's such a better version out there still. Anything like crazy as far as people you met, had chances to interview with anything, uh, you know, any, any interviews you've done or heard from people you've heard from after all this happened? Yeah. So even like, there's like nice interviews I've done here with the Cape. They were recognizing me as like a, a D3 kid and having success and being able to come play here. We have another D3 kid on my team as well. A uh, pitcher from Tufts who's awesome. So it's, it's great seeing D3 represented everywhere. I just think, um, the D3 hitters usually get overlooked more than the pitching because you can't really like uh, 95 is 95, but now it's like, let's get hitting 530 to translate to a good average at the next level. You know, it's like something has to, you have to, you have to try and translate that a little more. So Definitely. it's, yeah. But um, some great people I've met though, like uh, Chris Calabello and Bobby Tewksbury as well. I remember we, we talked about that game to do a podcast with them. I mean, they were, um, I followed Tewksbury when I was young too, like in hitting, like I have his book, I have like, uh, you name it. I have, I have a lot of his stuff. So I was like, Whoa, like, Hey, I follow you. <laughs> it's like, you want, so you want to talk to me? Wow. Yeah, I, was wow. Like, <laughs> I was like, Whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> so that yeah. was really cool. Now you, uh, also finally got connected to an advisor as well. Right. Um, after after through uh through chris and obviously his experiences in the majors and um incredible story from him too yeah yeah right you know <laughs> what's what's that like now having these extra resources to go to how has that helped prepare you and you know what's what how has that made you better it's a big help i remember um getting advice from somebody uh, I, th I believe it was actually scout. He was telling me how these advisors help with uh, certain little things in your life that can kind of de-stress you like certain contracts or, or certain like companies who want to do like deals with you and stuff like that. He handles a lot of that. He handles talking to all the teams as well. Um, so like, of course, certain teams have reached out to me, uh, but now he can go out and talk to all 30 about me like because he has experience there he has all their numbers he has all the resources possible um, and we get a great idea of what we're looking at come july as well so uh and it helps with uh talking about certain things that are just that i wouldn't have been able to talk about with myself with scouts you know so sure just the experience <clears throat> that he's gone through and uh, they've gone through has got to be invaluable now exactly so what's the plan now going ahead? Because we, you know, the, uh, what, 17th to, or 17th to 19th, I believe, are the draft dates. That's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday that week. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, until then, are we, you know, just kind of going as we, as we go, whatever makes the most sense? Do you, you know, stay up in the Cape for as long as possible before, uh, before everything happens? That's yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. Uh, body feels great and everything's going really well. So I, I'm looking to stay here as long as possible. Uh, that's where we're at right now as well. I know I talked to the coach the other day um, and he's cool with it as well, uh, because next year also with the year of eligibility left, uh, talking to certain schools as well um, and just looking to get the best chance at playing baseball at a professional level. You know, the 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 idea like at the end of the day, I just want to be, uh, you want to be the big leaguer and you want to win as many world series as possible, but what's the best possible route to get there? Is it getting another year of exposure at a high D one level, or is it going uh, this year, hopefully in the draft? That's again, that's the big, pretty much a lot of it's based off that day. So 
Yeah, yeah, and and then you've got the added factor of the uh, the age clock a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, having cl- been in college for five years already, um, do have the extra year left, which is a a, a blessing. But you know, yeah, I COVID. Guess, yeah, I guess you always have to weigh that against. You know, what is the best path? You know, you, you to 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 getting there as far as uh, your age and 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 where you are physically too. Yep. Yeah, that's where that's where that COVID blessing and a curse comes in. Like, oh, I have an extra year of eligibility, but I'm two years older than the junior. Right. Uh, but uh, if I could go there and perform right away, then I think it makes no difference. You know, I just like uh, get my worth and keep climbing as fast as possible. I think I could be there pretty quickly. Definitely. So, yeah. So I, I, that's what it comes down to, too. I think uh, how well can I go there and perform right away? So. That's why being in the Cape as long as possible helps a lot too. Yeah, absolutely. What's the what's the most important thing you've learned these last uh, two months since the end of the season? The most important thing, I think, the most important thing is to just keep being, uh, just keep working hard, honestly, and then the, to keep working harder as well, um, because you're going to get to the level where everybody works hard, but what is going to make your work ethic separate you from the rest. Like you got to really start to, that's why it becomes that 1% margin of people who play at such a high level. Um, A lot of it is work ethic and talent and who you're going to outwork to be able to get there. We don't want to go through a second interview without bringing this one up, but uh, here it is. Yeah. (laughs) The secret de-stress things no matter how good your approach is you know the games you get wound up you're gonna have the adrenaline rush you're gonna be wound up you still got to decompress you always have to tell us what you picked up between uh this year to uh to help us and uh, help you do that and how's it coming along so far yep the hobbies are growing it's for sure so originally it was like just the gym like but everybody hits the gym it's like a part of baseball so, you know, I started COVID came around. I got back into golf a little bit. You know, I was like, OK, golf's a great hobby. Uh, then about late January, early February this year, I picked up a guitar for the first time. And I think that's been the greatest hobby I've had. I don't have to go out on a course for 18 holes forever. I could just hop out in my backyard and play a six string guitar and just and feel good about myself. I am not good at playing the guitar by any means yet. But I, I'm getting there. So, like, it's this sort of mental escape where, like, I could progress in something else, you know. There's there's progress to be had in guitar, and it's a lot of fun. It's, so on a, on a scale of, like, zero to Eric Clapton, where are we as far as our guitar? <laughs> One, two? It's a solid. You know what? I'm going to give myself a two. I'm going to give okay. myself a two. So, I'm almost solid there. two is not bad. <laughs> almost learned my first song. Still working on it. What is our what is our first song? And and we're not gonna make we're not gonna break it out this time, but but maybe next <laughs> time right around you give it till draft time to 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 fit. But what is our first song we're working on? And please don't say like twinkle twinkle little star or something like that. Absolutely not. It's Bon Jovi. You give love a bad name is the first song. Oh, you Let's are go. definitely playing that next time. Even, oh. if it's, <laughs> even if it's just a little bit. We're we're getting that because when you're in the majors, we need that video. Right. Uh, see, by then, I should be a lot better at guitar where I could do a several songs. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we'll give you like three more weeks and then we're we're, we're we're cranking out some Bon Jovi. I should be there. Uh, three weeks should be there. I'm like really close. The, the, see, the, the hardest part now, like I could do most riffs or verses, mm-hmm. but uh, I shouldn't even say most. I shouldn't even say most, but like I could do a couple. And then the, the solos make it like 10 times harder. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You could probably do enough to show off now, but we're going to, we'll give you a few extra weeks. Thank you. Uh, because I still need to learn how to play in front of somebody. Like I said, I said earlier, the second I, I go in front of somebody, everything breaks down. Everything breaks down. <laughs> I forget, I forget the entire fretboard. I'm like, where, where's my hands? Yeah. I have no idea what's going on. Start thinking rather than doing. That's the biggest thing probably. Man. Yeah, see, and there, and it goes right back to baseball. Exactly. That's why a lot of guys with rocks in their heads are good at baseball because they're not thinking; they're doing. 
You should say that right after you hit 530, because that makes us wonder what's in your head. <laughs> I know. I was... Everybody else Not you. <laughs> what's that? Not you. Everybody else that does well. Everybody else. It's just everybody else. <laughs> but it, is, it is a key, right? Like just being able to simplify, you know? Yep. And, and you can be smart and you can be not smart. It, that's totally unrelated to your ability to simplify. I've seen, you know, guys who are, who are not smart, not be able to do it. I've seen guys yeah. who are geniuses be able to simplify to, to, to make it work. You know, it's just, yeah. that's the ability you need to have. It's yeah. It's definitely a, an, an X factor that just, you just need to find a way to, to bring it upon yourself. I think everybody has their own different ways of going about it, but I think a, commonality is like um people saying something to themselves like uh before the i woke up to the plate something i like whisper to myself i think saying something out loud has much more emotion than keeping it inside yourself so like when i tell myself it's not that serious i got that from coach miller again coach miller manta always helped out my mentality but first game of the year miller said guys it's not that serious and i was like yeah you know what you're right <laughs> so i started saying it and then yeah. my heart, my heartbeat would drop like s several beats and I would be like, oh, this is, I'm just chilling now. Yep. Find a way to make it simple, whether it's baseball or the guitar. We, we there you go. That. We appreciate it as always, Ryan. Um, I know the next couple of weeks are going to fly by. Um, yeah. Keep working your way up that board and uh, our next show will be a little celebration, I think. Sure hope so. Thank you so much, Coach Olson. Absolutely. Ryan McCarty, the intern, getting it done up at the Cape right now. And uh, draft prep, draft June, uh, July 17 to 19. We'll have some hopefully good news then. And uh, until then, catch our other draft preview issues and we will uh, 